Anyone peddling the notion that insurers are canceling people's plan without mentioning that almost all the insurers are encouraging people to join better plans with the same carrier and stronger benefits and stronger protections, while others will be able to get better plans with new carriers through the marketplace, and that many will get new help to pay for these better plans and make them actually cheaper, if you leave that stuff out, you're being grossly misleading, to say the least. As the president responding to what has become the leading line of Republicans' attack on Obamacare in the last week, which is no longer a glyph to you website, it's now policy cancellations. Republicans, you see, are now very worried about canceled health care coverage and Obamacare forcing people into signing up for more expensive plans. But it's not clear that is what is actually happening. Self-employed realtor, she buys her own insurance. Cavallaro's provider recently sent her this notice, reading, because of the requirements of the new laws, we can no longer offer your current policy. All I want is what I currently have. I want to keep my doctors, and I would like to have lower premiums. The insurance company is offering her a new plan that would cost $484 a month versus her current $293 premium, a 65% increase. So, 65% increase, that looks bad. That was a report from NBC Nightly News. But contributing editor for the American Prospect, Paul Waldman, saw the report and wanted to know what Cavallaros' other options might be. He did a little digging and discovered that by going on the California Exchange, he got, quote, nine different choices for a bronze plan. The average monthly cost was $258, or $35 a month less than what she's paying now for her bare bones plan. Waldman also found that, quote, she can get a silver plan with more generous coverage for $316, only $23 more than what she's paying now. One of our producers also hopped on the California Exchange website and came up with similar results. And that's assuming the woman in the piece was a 45-year-old and had an income high enough she didn't qualify for subsidies. Now, the other context here is that insurance companies don't seem to be giving people the full menu of options in the letters they are sending to announce policy cancellations. In fact, those letters seem like they're being used to upsell people into more expensive plans. Or as Waldman points out, it's like getting a letter from your car dealer saying the 2010 Toyota Corolla you're leasing has been recalled. We can supply you with a Toyota Avalon for twice the price. What they don't seem to be communicating to their customers is that there very well might be another plan that is ACA compliant that costs about the same as what they are paying now. Joining me now is Wendell Potter, former head of communications at the insurance company Cigna, author of the forthcoming ebook Obamacare. What's in it for me? What everyone needs to know about the Affordable Care Act. He's now a senior analyst at the Center for Public Integrity. All right, Wendell, I want to start with the baseline, which is what we had before the Affordable Care Act, because I think that's getting lost. How common was it for health insurance companies to cancel policies in the individual market in a given year? Oh, it's very, very common. In fact, it was one of the reasons I left the industry just because of that practice. Uh, and in fact, my own son was, uh, was a victim of that. In 2009, before the Affordable Care Act was passed, he got a letter from his Blue Cross plan in Pennsylvania telling him that his plan was being canceled and uh, his options were to go into a plan that was somewhat comparable but his premiums would increase 65 percent or he could shift into a very high deductible plan shifting him from one that had a five hundred dollar deductible to one that uh, had a five thousand dollar deductible in other words a ten times ten time increase in deductibles and that's what he that's what he was able to do this has been going on for many years chris and uh... uh it, it just now is coming to light reporters really haven't focused on this uh... in the end years past so insurance companies have been able to get away with this so the big question here is what is driving this and it seems to me there's a few things going on one is Plans that, were can that are being canceled have to be replaced with a plan that is compliant with the Affordable Care Act, which means basic minimums, which are being enforced. But it also does seem to me, and I've now seen a bunch of these letters through these stories, which has become a kind of genre, that the insurance companies are saying you could enroll in, in you know, this new plan B, and it is a lot more expensive, but it's also not clear that's the only plan that they're now offering. Right. That's exactly right. And then, and they, uh, it's just a classic uh, example of what I used to do for a living that is obscure, uh, the facts and to try to, or to selectively use selective, uh, uh, disclosure of facts, uh, to present something and make people think that they will not be able to get something that is better, uh, and probably for less money on the exchange. They don't want you to know that. What is, what kind of, just for, for people to kind of understand the overall context of the health insurance market, what, sliver of the population are we dealing with when we're talking about people that are in the individual market right now 
that have plans that are not grandfathered in that are being canceled. Can you give us a sense of the, the picture of, you know, sure. there's over 300 million Americans. Like, what are we looking at here? Less than 4%, about 4%. Uh, 15, 14 to 15 million people are in the individual market. It's small for two reasons. One, because insurance companies have uh, prohibited, have, have, have been able to uh, engage in practices of blackballing people because of pre-existing conditions. People can't buy policies at any price in many cases on the individual market uh, because of being sick in the past, and and, and also because uh, uh, they're uh, they're able to cancel policies when they when they want to, uh, and uh, or price them so high that people can't can't afford them, uh, and so we're, that's we're talking about a very small percentage of the population. Here's the other thing too, though, people who are currently in the individual market probably can get coverage that is better than what they have now because a lot of those people are enrolled in junk policies that companies like the ones I used to work for absolutely have sold in the past several years, and they can probably qualify, many of them will, in fact the majority will qualify for tax credits or subsidies to bring the cost of premiums down so they'll be paying less for better coverage. Quickly, Wendell, did the president and, and the people administration overpromise when they said repeatedly, if you like your plan now, you can keep it? Well, it was unfortunate uh, language because the president nor Congress nor this law can can really control the insurance companies that well, that effectively. Uh, they control the health care system in many ways. They're able to get away with this, and they are, as we're seeing. Yeah, it was a promise that uh, it now appears that they could not themselves keep. Wendell Potter from exactly. the Center for Public Integrity, thank you so much. All right, former Congressman Barney Frank's name was brought up more than once today on the House floor, cited as a, an authority, a man supporting a bill that is essentially a big wet kiss from politicians to Wall Street. But that's actually not exactly the case. He will be here to react. Coming up next.